very good evening to you all again and uh, it's nice to meet a different uh, group of you know i shouldn't say students professionals with different background uh, who are have involved in this you know this, uh paper uh, several years so basically when i get the request to do this lecture what i thought i should do something that is productive for the participants right so therefore what i'm going to basically do i'm going to highlight what is the syllabus and then what are the areas uh, you have to uh, you know I think I I have shared presentation. Can you can you can you share the senior presentation? Not yet. How about the my voice? Some some student says they can't hear. What about others? Voice is clear and we can see you. Okay, so then it may be a problem from your end. So we do understand. And I request you to keep your mic mute. Otherwise, you know, I can hear some noises. Yeah. Good afternoon. I mute you. Okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you want to ask questions, then you can unmute and talk to me. Or else, uh, other than that, you have to keep your mic muted. Otherwise, you know, it disturbs the others. That is the new normal and the online platform. Okay. So I hope now you all can see my presentation. So this is international affairs uh, related uh, question in your paper B. And usually uh, you get this question in uh, question number 11. And I have given my, you know, background. I'm Dr. Janaka Fernando from the University of Sri Javadanapur. And I have done a lot of studies related to economics, international development, and international relations. So therefore, I can give a kind of brief overview. Okay. Uh, so I think now infrastructure is clear, so we can get started. Right. First thing about the syllabus. So you can see the syllabus and I think you know what is the syllabus. So basically here, uh, the Institute tried to test your knowledge on three main areas, world politics, the UN charter and UN system and disarmament. So these are the areas basically you should know. But when it comes to the uh, you know examinations, uh, you get a question somewhat, you know, like essay type question. So basically for 25 marks, you get a kind of one question statement and you have to write an essay type answer. So what my experience is many students have failed to understand this. And most of the time they try to answer the question in point form, right? So. First, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some examples from these topics, world politics, and something related to UN, and my readings on UN systems. And then I'm going to talk about the, the common weaknesses of the students, highlighting and uh, taking some examples. And then the way you should answer this question, if you, if you want to attempt question number 11, right? So they're basically what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a structure. And then, yeah, basically uh, the common mistakes uh, I'm going to explain, right? Okay, so let's continue. Uh, and the ground rules, uh, 
no rules if you want to disturb me at any times you can do that or if you have questions you can send me a text message i can uh, test your check your questions from i can take your questions from the chat box okay right so these are the common problems space actually uh, identified by the student right common problems when you face this examination the first one is poor reading habits so if you don't read in general sometimes you may read in particular to your your field of specialization right but the thing is uh, the the institute uh, like uh, iesa they need you to read broadly to under you should understand general matters in the society so you can't get this knowledge if you limit your readings to your specialization area right because then you are reading very narrowly right but to better understand especially international problems relations you should read different different topics right why this you know understanding is important because when you make decisions some are not very micro level decisions right maybe your micro level factors may be perfect let's say your work, your work as engineer and within your organization everything is perfect but if you can't read the external environment or macro environment or else if you can't get this you know we call the birds view the overall understanding you fail to be a good decision maker technically you may be correct but when you try to implement that decisions that might not fit to the context right so that's why you should read broadly and understand different concepts right so same thing repeated in the in, the, in point 2 lack of knowledge of common affairs especially politics economics and social issues right so i have noticed this throughout the last several years when i go through your papers right and the third problem is inability to structure response to a question right so when the question is an essay type question so you need to have a nice structure you should be you should develop an argument and convince your reader about your views right but unfortunately most of the time i don't see this kind of structure in most of the answers right and you sometimes you write but there is no focus that's another problem right number 5 i'm not going to address because i can't help in that aspect you have to find your own ways to overcome the number 5 problems with the english language right so you have to find a way to improve your english that is beyond my specialization right okay so let's go with the first one uh poor readings so i'm going to give you a recommendation right as a habit you can read bbc news daily right so I, i used to do that and even nowadays i do that right so the first one a quick guide to the us china trade war right now if i show you some statistics right so you might not believe so you can see here i think you can see this chart from yes early 90s to 2000 up to 2080s 18 right 2018 so just imagine why we can see a lot of conflicts between us and china these days this is the reason that like, this is the reason and who knows sometimes this may be the reason for the the third world war right look at the reason so you should understand this uh, situation the, the the problem between the two giants 
right? It's a trade war, nothing else, right? What is the reason? Exports, right? Exports and imports. This is exports to China, US to China, right? So they export nearly 100 billion, 100 billion US dollars for commodities to, you, uh, to China. However, they import over 500 billion US dollar worth goods and services from China. The trade deficit, you can see here. $419 billion US dollars. That is the trade deficit between China and US. Okay? So that's why you see so many issues. So many issues. And if you don't know this as a fact, you will not understand the world politics today. Right? World politics today. China was not an enemy of US in the early 90s, right? China was a poor country and US supported China, right? So, but the reason was there's no big trade deficit. But now it's different. If you want to understand the magnitude of this number, right? The total Sri Lankan exports somewhere around 12 billion US dollars. Right. Roughly 22 billion US dollars. Actually, our trade deficit is just 10 billion US dollars. With the rest of the world, the total. But look at here. Right. So, yeah, yeah. that's why you should understand. Uh, it's better if you keep your mic, uh, you know, on mute. Otherwise, you know, the readers might hear different voices. Okay. So this is one fact. So you have to read it. How how do you get this kind of information? Right? How do you get this kind of information? So here I have given some, some information. Right. A quick guide to the US, a quick guide to the US China trade war. So, this is a BBC article, right? BBC article on business, right? So, here. So, if you effectively utilize your time, maybe while you're, while you're traveling, while you're, while you're enjoying your leisure, with your smartphone, you can read this kind of, you know, articles, right? These are really interesting, really, really interesting, right? So if you go through this article, you can get a quick understanding about the problem, right? This is somewhat old. This is during, yeah, in 2020 January. And the article talks about the Donald Trump and the trade war between China and the US, right? Uh, and there was a kind of one-to-one compete, like uh, uh, first US imposed certain tariff, right? And as a retaliation, China what did, they also did the same thing. Right, so that's why we call this is a trade war. Why you US has to do this? Because they have a huge 400, over 400 billion US dollar trade deficit with China, right? So 
Then they impose tariffs. July 2018, 34 billion. And but China did. Right? Did for tax. Right. So the policies you can see. August, again, US imposed 16 billion US dollars. Reacted. Right. Uh, I kindly request. I kindly request you to mute your mic because otherwise, you know, uh, maybe your personal discussion may be recorded at your institute, right? Some are maybe interesting, but some are maybe really personal. Right? So be careful when you talk, right? Make sure your mic is on mute. Otherwise, what happened? So you should, I think, you should not face any problems, right? Okay. So this is the first thing I want to highlight. Okay. Now, there is a huge trade deficit uh, in, in US uh, trade account simply because they import a lot from China. And as a result, during the Donald Trump period, he tries to do something, but he used, actually used tariffs on various grounds. Some are rational, some are not. Okay, I will come to that part in a minute. Okay, so you should understand this. So this is the first thing for like, uh, for you to understand this situation. Okay. Uh, I don't know with, with the new president, how it's going to be, but with the new president, what you can see a traditional US economy, the traditional US policies. But if you look at Donald Trump, drastic changes you observe, politics, economic, policies and everything. And now they're going back to the normal path. Okay, so this is the first thing. And the second one, uh, developments. Uh, most of the time, China is the target because China is one of the fastest growing economy in the world. And importantly, China has maintained that momentum for more than two decades. That's why they're so powerful because they have achieved a rapid growth, GDP growth over 10% consecutively, on average 10% growth consecutively for more than 20 years, which is remarkable because you can understand if you compare that fact with Sri Lanka, because we achieve uh, somewhere close to 10%, about 10%. So we don't want to get that again. I'm, I'm kind of requesting from you. Or oh, if you have a member from IESL, can you kindly check these students who are not on mute and mute them? Otherwise, maybe it is disturbing for others. Yeah, please do that. Okay. I can do that, but that takes my time. Okay. So now, now, now look at what is this Belt and Road Initiative. Right. So I have another uh, article on that. Right. Give me a second. Yeah, this one. So this is New Silk Road. That's what we call Belt and Road Initiative, right? So you can see their plan. Yeah. This is old one, but they try to do it like activate it again. And this is important for us because if you are working as, as an engineer in Sri Lanka, Look at here. We are on the path eh? here. Right? Via Ahmadabad. Now we are connected to this 
uh, road, uh, Belt and Road Initiative. Okay, so almost now we are, we are seeing the developments because now Amatra Port is using uh, extensively by Chinese firms. This will this will continue within next 10-15 years, right? Because now we have actually released that port to China for 99 years. Okay, so now actually they control this port and there are certain other ports even in Bangladesh, right? So this is the plan, this is the plan. But if you don't know what is this Belt and Road Initiative or New Silk Road Initiative, right? Then you have a problem. I put a question on this Belt and Road Initiative, but only very few students have successfully answered that question. Right? So, therefore, you should understand. Uh, Belt and Road Initiative is involved waves of Chinese fundings who made infrastructure projects around the world. Right? So they are going to connect China with the major cities in the world. Right? This is also from BBC. Right? This is also from BBC. Italy joins China's new Silk Road project. Okay? And let's continue. Right, this one, very much important. Etka, right, Etka. Can anyone text me the meaning of Etka? Come on. So you can text messages. Yes, anyone? Is there anyone who knows about this Edka? No? So you should know. Economics and Technology Corporation, Core. Is it? Economic and Technology Cooperation Agreement mm -hmm. between between come on, come on, please, please text your answer. Yes, early it was SIPA now. It is it cut between mm -hmm. India and China. Right? So this kind of recent changes, this is not a recent development, right? So therefore I already have tested this knowledge from uh, in, in previous exams, right? So if, the, if you take the topic, it's about world politics, right? So there, there is no limit. How do you prepare? How do you prepare? What we expect from you, you should update about the recent developments. How do you update about the recent developments? So you should have a good reading habit. You have to read. The best source for me, but I recommend for you all. BBC, right? So they usually update all these uh, developments, but certain Certain development specific to Sri Lanka might not be appeared on BBC. In that case, you have to look for local sources, maybe Sunday Observer, or Financial Times, right? Okay. So here I have given information about this. This is in 2019. Uh, yes, long times ago. Maybe during the previous government. Right, on Sunday Observer. Finalized proposals of the Joint Committee on Economic and Technology Cooperation Agreement between Sri Lanka and India and presented to the cab cabinet of ministers next, next week. 
so you can get more information you should understand what is this right okay so i will i, I will put a question now edka was about uh, liberalizing the you know liberalizing the the economic right uh, between sri lanka and india, sri lanka and india okay if i ask a question now when based on your understanding of uh, whether sri lanka is open economy right uh, like sri lanka is an open economy you know that as a fact what is the meaning of this open economy anyone if you want you can use your mic and text me or, or talk to me or, or otherwise you can text the answer what do you understand when we say sri lanka is an open economy hmm? the export and import uh, activities are uh, will open and no barriers okay thank you open means now we can discuss the economic openness in various ways first thing is trade account is open trade account rep represents imports and exports of what commodities like merchandise imports and merchandise exports commodities goods goods imports and good exports other than that there is another account we call service account import and exports of services right and the other one is capital account uh, capital inflows and capital outflows so there are three accounts trade account service account and the capital account now we call sri lanka is a open economy is an open economy but as correctly answered by one of the student right now we have fully open only the trade account right so we have not opened our service account so this this dialogue it covers something related to that it's not you know of course uh, promoting more trade between two two countries but mainly we discuss about this opening the service sector what is opening the service sector anyone any idea most of the political issues are you know related to economic issues so when you talk about uh when you talk about the current uh, political or kind of uh, problems with sri lanka and india actually those are related to economic matters right economic matters therefore when you are, to understand the world politics you should know what is the economic situation in in two countries right open job markets open job markets right now we can open sri lanka is open economy that means if you think you want to import any commodity from india no restrictions you can import or very few restrictions you can import that's the meaning of open economy right but that is not applicable to services let's say if you want to recruit someone if you want to recruit someone you have to recruit that person within sri lanka right you can't publish your vacancy in india and recruit someone from india is it possible is it possible it is possible if that particular skill is not available possible uh, what you have to do if you want to recruit someone from india got to get that poor first you have to you have to put the vacancy in sri lanka job uh, you know vacancies and you have to say uh, this particular skill is not available in sri lanka right then you can recruit someone from india right so that's a procedure right so that possible but not it's not open that's why there are a lot of restrictions to recruit people capital account the other one is capital account right you can't freely invest money in india it is closed 
even indians cannot really purchase shares of particular type of firms in sri lanka restricted right so you should understand this vocabulary because these are not economics as well as these are politics because the political problems generally creates with this kind of uh, you know economic issues okay so you have a very you know difficult task the reason is you are not familiar with this kind of terms sometimes right but in the examination you get a question suddenly on edca right then you have to write an essay on that for 25 marks so what i recommend start reading from today onward check bbc news on various issues right and listen to uh, special policy issues in relation to sri lanka right uh, so that is some kind of hints and some suggestions you to improve your reading ability and that may be directly relevant for this particular question in international affairs right if you don't read basically you should not attempt this question right that's a fact okay right any questions up to now any questions yes i can see some i can hear some voices no no questions yes sir uh, it means uh, 25 marks uh, in then with the question uh, how much length should be or the how many words should be except to any indication give me a second no voice is not yes can you repeat the question please is yes, uh, my question was uh, any indication about the word content or any volume about on the answer to get 25 marks in this kind of question mm -hmm. okay i will ask that question and i have a section towards the end of the presentation about the struct how to structure your answer right in that part i will take your question okay right anything else and you have to guess what's going to be the, the the question this time okay in the paper because there are so many things we discuss nowadays right and there were some questions related to pandemics how this pandemic affects developing countries right um danga mana bol world is changing every day you can see some every day you can see some you know new new developments can you elaborate little bit on issues related to ect in kalamba port okay uh there was a nice facebook video or presentation which was done by one of the uh, leader of trade union right and you can search that on facebook and that gives a lot of information why this uh, uh what is that uh, ect ne? terminal just east container terminal is important right and again it is uh, again a political issue india wants this one and sri lanka under the previous government agreed to give it but now the new government you don't know may might not be the new government but many stakeholders those who are interested about this did not want to continue with the project right here the argument was uh that that particular place is container terminal has a unique advantage right as engineers you, you should know information much better than me this is something related to the the, the deep side and the soft side of the uh, two terminals there are two terminals and there was advantage like transferring containers from big ships to small ships something like that 
and why India is interested because most of the transship transshipments are going to India via this uh, place, right? And basically, uh, it's assets asset for a country like Sri Lanka. Okay, so if you ask facts, right? I also uh, have very limited information, but if I generally answer your question about privatizing public properties, right, state-owned enterprises, when we when we thinking to privatize, privatize is one extreme of public-private partnerships. It it ranges from transferring management to privatization. If you take uh, Sri Lankan airline, somewhere in 2008, if my, my memory is correct. Yeah, 2000, uh, no, 1996 to 2008 or something like that. Yes, 10 years, 1998 to 2008. It was under the management of, uh, you know, foreign uh, company, Emirates. It's one form of privatization, uh, sorry, public-private partnership. The other one is transferring ownership to a private company. So there are various, you know, forms in between. So when we think of this kind of privatizations or some kind of, you know, public-private partnerships, um, sometimes we have to consider the national interest security, strategic importance of certain places for the Sri Lanka. It's not always whether the, that particular uh, organization, company or firm may be losses. Some assets are strategically important, right? So therefore, but I believe uh, you don't need, you don't need to prioritize it. The reason is, is this foresight exchange foreign reserves earning businesses, right? And especially if we can develop them with the support of the local private companies, right? That, I think that's a good initiative, but that is somewhat out of, out of the topic, but it's good because it's a recent development, right? So that's how you should pick. It's a recent development, and you can read more on that. Okay, not only that. Now, now we are talking about the other terminal, uh, the West Terminal, right? Try to give it to uh, India as a way to balance, you know, the the political issues. So, better you read more. Might not be available this kind of discussions on the BC because those are not directly related to one politics but important for the Sri Lankan politics. So you, you may read BBC or something else. So. Right? Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Any other questions? It's a good guess because it's a recent development. Definitely you should know before you go to the examination. Right, so let me continue. Uh, the, the next one is about United Nations and the charters and uh, the different uh, organizations under the United Nations, right? So if you look at the facts, background, right? United Nations, Actually, it was created for form after the Second World War, right? So there were so many uh, problems after the World War II. It was ended in 1945. So many countries, right? So they get together and form this organization, United Nations. Right now, this is, I recently collected this information. There are 193 member states under the umbrella term, umbrella organization, United Nations, right? 
and the missions and work of the United Nations are guided by the purposes and principles contained in its founding charter. So if you read about the UN, this, this is what you get. This is what you get. But the problem is, what is the problem? What is the problem? Can we believe this? Is it true? Can we believe this? Is it correct? What is your idea? Do you think United Nations are governed by its principles and purposes? What is your views? What is it? Okay, can you hear me? I, I got a disturbance from my, my, my neighboring house. Uh, there are some certain construction going on. So can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Right, now it's okay, no? Right. Do you get a noise, background noise? Just a little bit, but can manage. Okay, right, thank you very much. Okay, so let's continue then. Okay, now here, uh, now the, the, the objective, if you look at the objective of the United Nations, those are well documented and I'm not going to repeat it, right? But the thing is, right? But the thing is, if you look at here, uh, these are the uh, you know countries funds the united nations right so these these countries actually us china japan germany united kingdom france and you can you can see the share regular budget share of this each of the, each of each, each country contribute to the development of uh, so the budget of the United Nations, U.S. contributes to it two percent of the total budget of U.N. China twelve percent, Japan eight percent, Germany six. Right. So these these are the contributions. Right. Now, if you look at these numbers and see here, and these Western powers, including U.S. Right, actually, we know Japan is an ally of our uh, US, 
Germany, United Kingdom, France, Italy. So these these countries usually work together, Dad. right? Minute, I mean, let me Right? It, they actually contribute to over over forty eight percent of the UN budget, right? So then we have a problem. And we have a problem. What is the problem? Now, when we go to the United Nations, they work together and they have a more controlling power in the UN General Assembly, right? General Assembly. So if you if you think current Sri Lankan situation, right? If you think about the current Sri Lankan situation, what you can what you can comment? Hmm? Now we are saying uh, Sri Lanka is an independent country, and therefore the resolutions or any issues against Sri Lanka should be, you know, fairly evaluated. But what's the problem? Problem is uh, now Sri Lanka is not a friendly country of European powers, right? Not a friendly country of European powers. Then what happened? Then what happened? Hmm? Then Sri Lanka is supported by China. And India, not that much, but Russia, only two countries. Ne? I'm not sure about Brazil, right? I'm not sure about Brazil, but this is the this is the formula, right? This is the formula. Now, do you think then in this world politics, UN act as a kind of independent and fair organization? So that's why this kind of information are important because if you just go back to the the the, the, the basic document, United Nations is an international organization and it has its own you know uh, you know objectives, principles. But do you think they follow all those principles? Hmm? Can anyone comment on this? Can anyone comment on this? See, with these numbers and facts, it is not uh, possible to think and believe uh, how an independent uh, behavior and uh, appearance Definitely. in front of Sri Lanka. Definitely, because that's why these uh, political influences are important. And I know as a fact, now Asian Devel if you take Asian Development Bank, main contributor or the main funding aid, funding country is Japan. Japan funds the Asian Development Bank, right? Major donor. And even when they decide their recruitments, this, this, these countries have, you know, a quota, right? A significant quota in their system. So employees are from those countries. That's why you see one or two representatives from Sri Lanka in, in the United Nations, right? Because we do not contribute that much to, the, to their budget. So if you want to do a fair evaluation about any policy, you should know the facts, not what is stated in their objectives here. That's why you should read critically, right? That's why you should read critically. So this kind of background information about the United Nations and there are certain sub, uh, you know, uh, organizations coming under United Nations, United Nations development programs, and there are so many organizations, eh? human rights uh, commissions and so many things. But the thing is, when Sri Lanka, let's say uh, uh, there are, you know, issues related to war crimes in, in, in Sri Lanka, but during, the good governors, Jahapalna government, there were no any, you know, allegations 
the reason is those governments that the, the previous government was a friendly government to the western powers right then no problems at the united nation assembly but once the power tra uh, transferred from the the to transfer to the new government now the, the 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 equation is different right so you should understand when you criticize or critically evaluate policies related to this okay that's a very much uh, that is very much important for your understanding the one question sorry for that yes. sir the previous slide yeah sir could you please explain how how, how do you the how we can arrive these figures like glo global economic share is this much and regular budget share what does that mean sir actually, actually i don't have is, a, I, okay yeah. okay okay now now the global economic share means now we can uh, uh, value the gdp of each of the country right now if you take sri lankan gdp it's somewhere around 90 billion us dollars right yeah. but likewise we can get the size of the gdp of each country then we can get the total world gdp and we can get the share right so that's the global economy share from the total world gdp 23% of the gdp is coming from us 14% is coming from china 6% from japan likewise right and this is their contribution to total budget right so UN, UN. okay okay un budget okay good it sir thank you very much thanks the, the next one is this is your percentage from yes correct this is in percentage form i got a question whether it's in percentage form yes in percentage form right okay so that's why i said over oh, 48% of the total budget of the un is you know funded by these few countries so they basically control it what so, i was telling you yes okay and also the, we can see that the global economy share the percentage uh, approximately equal uh, with the share with the un USA 23 percent of the global. Course, that's of course because the thing is uh, that's the formula to get the membership fees, right? So they have a formula in UN. They have a formula to calculate the membership fee, and that is connected to global economy share. For poor countries, it is very low because if the output GDP and the uh, uh, the share in the global economy is very small, of course their member member contribution is very small, right? and big countries maximum there is a kind of ceiling that is 22% up to 22% they can get if they if they control a large share of the world economy right so you can read more on that formula but that that's correct right and on the other hand we should understand then they are the uh, controlling parties of the world economy as well right because that is the basis of getting funds no then anyway those two are linked good good observation any other questions so what what i want to emphasize not just to show these numbers but can you evaluate any un action without considering these facts that is my question can you evaluate any un action right against any country without looking at these numbers no you should know this so that is that's the important point when you make arguments if you don't know this kind of hidden facts you may be totally wrong right especially when you don't know the political power balance okay right <clears throat> let's move to the next part uh you know you know you know what is colo colonies uh, colonies right but now actually we talk about neo colonies uh, colonies right neo colonies right. this is what we are talking nowadays right india share shows only this but their participation is valued by un can you explain why sir <clears throat> the thing is uh, 
even india is a big country but they are still there were like uh, the, the the i think uh, there is another reason india right now if you look at global economy share and their regular budget like contribution is lower because even india produce large numbers they you know economic indicators are not so good india is not a rich country ne? yet india is not a rich country because they have so many development problems even they they have 2.62% share of the world output right and there are kind of concessions for that kind of countries when they calculate the uh, the budget share it's not proportionate exactly proportionate to the global economy share now if you look at usa their global economy share 23% but the regular budget share is only 22% the reason is there is a maximum right and some some poor countries now look at if you compare india and italy what do you observe what do you observe italy is contributing yeah. more than the global percentage yeah the, the 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 share is same global economy share is same but the contribution is different Sometimes. italy contributes a large amount because italy is a rich country right but india is a poor country right It's, India is not a developed country. India likes Sri Lanka, and even behind Sri Lanka. So that's the reason. Did I answer your question, Nilmini? So you better read uh, the UN system, okay? Then you you understand this. But anyway, it's good. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Your colonialism, okay? So you know what is colonial colonies and uh, what what was the, behind the colonial you know system and how it worked and Sri Lanka was a colony of <clears throat> three European powers, but now we are not talking about those colonialism. Now we are talking about new colonialism. What is new colonialism? Anyone? If anyone wants to try this question. anyone so these are on sri lanka newspapers not not sri lanka actually asia times right so you have you have articles related to this kind of concepts right now most of the time if you if you look at <coughs> european union right they impose lot of constraints on developing countries saying they violate human rights right sometime uh, they ban certain imports from those countries right and using child labor sometimes they put conditions if you use child labor then we don't allow you to export your product to our countries i think nike uh, yes shoe manufacturer faced this problem when they when they when there was a kind of you know investigation about the child labor using in in their uh, i guess case vietnam factories okay there was a kind of you know uh developments in recent economies and some countries you know suffer because of this right so what is neo colonialism how do you understand this hmm using this kind of different different you know principles may be related to uh the human rights may be related to other ethical practices what these developed countries do still they try to control poor economies right and sometime it is by providing funds now if you look at china 
what they're doing. So we call it is dev trap diplomacy. Right? Sometime China grant loans uh, for any any development projects without considering their feasibility. Then when the countries cannot repay the borrowed loans, then they take over those assets. Indirectly, what happened? China is colonizing those economies. So this is neo-colonialism. So this is the dialogue in recent years, right? This is the dialogue in recent years, okay? So if you do not understand this kind of concepts, right? Then you can't answer the question. I put it into your, uh, your paper, right? So this, uh, this is a kind of, you know, very lengthy article. There are a lot of information on these colonial uh, colonial issues, like including, uh, <clears throat> like uh, yes, uh, European uh, conquers conquers the consecutive rules of the coastal lowlands, Portuguese, Dutch, and British. But the important part is here: post-colonial development. But this one is important: neo-colonialism and geopolitical rival, right? Now here, as I said earlier, you can see neo-colonialism involves factors such as, uh, same factors, uh, but especially there was some kind of, you know, as I said earlier, uh, the same thing, they do the same thing, what is that? Uh, control poor countries and exploit their wealth like all the other countries did, right? Uh, but in the neo-colonialism, it is basically coming through ethical considerations, uh, depth, you can see here. Uh, Hamad report, right? So this is one example, one example. When it is necessary, developed countries grant loans, but when they, have, when they fail to repay it, they try to control those poor countries using that kind of information, uh, the, 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 the facilities provided by them. Very much similar uh, to, uh, you know, if you look at the uh, situation in ground, ground level, right? If you borrow money extensively from one person, that person can control you, right? Something similar to that person colonizing you, right? Same thing here, okay? So you better read on this kind of new developments Better you understand what is colonialism, right? And maybe you learn about those things during your school time, maybe A-levels, O-levels, right? But to answer this question, that is not enough, right? That is not enough. You have to have a strong understanding about recent developments, okay? recent developments, even it is related to So neocolonialism is a threat to the country. As engineers, what, the, what strategy we can have or contingency plan to protect the country or deal with neocolonialism? Here the problem is uh, now, if we want to now, if you if you take directly Sri Lanka as example, right? And if we answer this question, uh, take this question critically. As in engineers, what are the strategies we can have or contingency plan to protect the country or deal with neo-colonialism? How do we deal? 
as a professional organization, maybe you can do very little because that is something related to politics, Sri Lankan politics, right? But now let's say we want uh, borrowings, let's say foreign loans to run this economy, of course. Let's say if you want to develop uh, East Terminal, East Container Terminal, if we don't have money, but we can do, we can borrow money, no problem, right? But when we borrow money, what was the practice over several years in Sri Lanka, right? Most of the time, we just go to one party, right? We call bilateral uh, agreements, just go to China and ask money for that, right? Or just go to India and try to have an agreement on that. In that case, what happened, we can get money, but most of the time, the interest rates conditions are not good for the country. But sometimes it may be good for the politicians, but as a country, this kind of, you know, because there are no negotiations to, we just go and ask and they offer it and we take it. In most of the cases, we get the loan and we construct something here, labor from that particular country, material from that particular country. Finally, we sell it to that particular country. Nothing else other than the loan. We just repay the loan. So this should be avoided as engineers what you can do, right? You can actively engage, especially when development projects are proposed by the government, right? So that is something uh, if you want to answer this kind of question, right? Because this is from a very much of, you know, patriotic, patriotic uh, perspective. Ne? You love Sri Lanka, then you want to protect it, right? But when you answer question, it should be something different, okay? Did I answer your question? Any other questions? No economies in Manda, but China only loan of Kutu Portu, Ali Ali Kudukan. I put pay on the U and the Lam. That is where on a book, the country will take. Sorry, I, I, I can't. Hello, I can't see. Hello, uh, someone, someone asking a question or making a comment, but I, I couldn't properly hear it. Can you repeat it? Okay, might not be a uh, question or a comment, maybe a, a private discussion. Okay, another important part, right? Structure of your answers, structure of your answers. Yes. Now, most of the time what happened, I got the, I got the question uh, when I do this, uh, the explain the first part. If you get a question, right, how do you structure your answer? Basically, if it is a essay type question, and if you write it for 25 marks, right, you should have a the structure. First thing, you should introduce the concept. Okay? There should be an introduction to your argument, first part. If it is road and belt initiative, you should explain what is road and belt initiative and uh, recent information about that. So those are going to be the introduction, uh, uh, uh. right? Or if you take uh, impact of ECTA on Sri Lankan economy, so you have to give an introduction about ECTA. What is ECTA? ECTA means this and it replaced, uh, the CIFA the, the was replaced by ECTA and the idea is this. So you have to give an introduction to the context. Right, the concept and the context, okay? Then the content or the body of your argument, right? So if you clearly read the question, then you may see the impact of uh, it 
on Sri Lankan economy. Then basically you have to you have to understand the question is about the impact, impact of impact, right? So you can take one one point, right? Let's say it is bad. It's very bad. You take one point and write two pages on it. What is the point? ECA uh, proposed to open the service sector. Therefore, we get so many Indians into Sri Lanka. So you can write so many things about this using different examples, right? Different words. But then your content is not comprehensive, right? Sometimes you have written two pages, but maybe you get one or two marks. There is only one point in your other body or the content, what you are supposed to do, you should explore all the arguments for and against. Right? Now, let's say when, when we say impact, Basically, you can have two sections in your body. One is positive impacts. The second one, negative impacts. Right? Because, of course, when we sign an agreement like that, there are positive uh, things and negative things. Right? But if you simply forget that about, about uh, that positive and negative things and take one point and elaborate two pages, Basically, your analysis is not complete, right? So then, first, what I recommend, especially when you structure your answer, just do a small brainstorming session, right? You can think, what are the options you have, right? What are the options or the, how do you structure your answer? How many words approximately should be should be an answer for 25 marks? Uh, I cannot specify a number of words, but just try to understand what I'm going to tell you, right? Now let's say impact. Okay. So you can do a brainstorming sessions. There are two aspects. Okay. Some are positive, some are negative, right? And try to get points as much as you can. What are the positive effects? Positive effects. Not only one. There may be so many positive effects. And then negative effects. What are the negative effects? Not only one. What are the negative effects? Right. So you have to develop this before you write the answer. Okay. Now then you have for the particular questions I, I chosen here, the impact of ECTA on Sri Lankan economy, positive effects. You can list, you can elaborate and uh, present in uh, different points. You can say, okay, one plus point is Sri Lanka, we have 22 million uh, population, but India, 1,300, over 1,300 million population. So through this agreement, we have a chance to access a larger market, right? So because of this uh, uh, market, sometime, uh, you know, we can, access, we can increase the market share of the local firms, increase the demand for our products, something like that. The one positive point. That's it. That is only one point and you can explain that one, right? And one negative point, <laughs> oh, this is disturbing, but I think you, you are engineers, you should know. You should mute your microphone be, before you talk. Okay. Right, so 25. Uh, so then, if you want to get 25 marks, I basically look at, at how 
open you are to analyze this question if you have only one point here one point here you get very few marks and don't write these points in bullet form right that is not what we expect kind of essay type answer right but this you can have a sketch you can have a brainstorming session for 5 10 minutes before you start writing your answer and then identify all possible positives and negatives right then there should be a conclusion in most of the papers i couldn't see this part what the question is the impact impact of covid so impact of it on sri lankan economy right so at the end what you should considering this plus point you identified and negative points you identified you should have a conclusion it can't be this is good and also bad 50% good 50% bad no you should have a conclusion so considering these facts it seems uh cost or the negative effects are outperforming the positive effects therefore we should not sign this something like that otherwise what happen you have written so many things there is no conclusion right so that cannot be right so this is the normal structure of an essay type paper but i understand uh depending on the nature of the papers you have tried uh in your lifetime maybe you might not have this kind of questions uh you have not answered this kind of questions but you have to practice ne should the conclusion be based on our opinion after re reading the information on it okay now let's say you identify so many you in your answer you have identified so many plus points and few negative points but you don't like this let's say personally you don't like this uh etka uh that is actually yeah yeah you don't like this then what happened you write this is not good what is the scenario now you identify so many positive things in this agreement economic and technology cooperation agreement and very few negative points and especially when you evaluate you observe uh the benefits are bigger than the uh, the cost or the negative effects can you write a conclusion this is not good dinali can you write a conclusion like that uh no sir should we elaborate uh, based on what we believe is right you can't write anything on your belief okay it should be factual right because if you explain so many positive things and very few negative things and if you believe this shouldn't be done and if you write a conclusion it shouldn't be done that is totally wrong because your your conclusion should be based on the facts you have presented right mm -hmm. and let's say uh is terminal uh is container terminal agreement right so we can we can actually calculate what are the cost what are the benefits if we have more benefits by giving it to adani or the indian company we should give it even we don't like it that is the conclusion right and there are certain things if certain aspects cannot be quantified if certain aspects uh, can have some you know subjective views 
right? In that case, you can moderate your facts to a certain extent, but that doesn't mean you can write whatever the things or the conclusion you, you want. That is not, right? Any other questions? Is it clear? Is it clear? Okay, any other questions? Right, the last point is very much important. The what you asked was exactly I observe in most of the answers. Right? Now, when I give a question, so when you when you notice a question in your exam paper, you take it personally. Right? And then start writing based on your personal views. There was a one answer script throughout the answer on two pages, what the student has written, I love my country, India is trying to dominate us, right? So this should, no, this should not be done at any cost, right? That's so many negative things about ECTA, right? And there were no points, only that kind of, you know, things basically that student has taken question personally right so we don't ask and we don't look at your personal opinions your argument should be based on facts you cannot make decisions based on your personal views Right? Decision should be based on facts. Okay? And even when we use Sri Lanka and some, you know, familiar concepts in this kind of, you know, questions, it's where if you can think you are not a Sri Lankan. Independently value, independently answer the given question. Right? So this part is missing in most of the answers, when we give a question, you take personally as your, you know, I should provide my opinion. Right? There are places that you should provide your opinion, but it's not totally based on, not totally based on your opinion. Okay. Is it clear? Did you get my point? Yes, sir. Any questions? Any questions? Hmm? Okay. So that, that's all I prepared in particular, right? Uh, that's what I wanted to talk with you within first one and a half hours. It's already seven now, right? And uh, the next, yes. Next half an hour for questions uh, related to, you know, the, the, uh, the syllabus or anything. If you want to ask any questions, I can maybe take next half an hour and answer your questions. I, I can see some, you know, messages are circulating and you're going to, uh, okay. One, one question about the, the, the suggested question here. I have a model question. Impact of economic and technological operation agreements on Sri Lankan economy. Can the answer be structured as follows? What is ECTA? Purpose, outcomes, recent developments. Now, if you look at, this is good. Huh? This structure is good. What is ECTA, purpose, outcomes, recent developments? And now, now just imagine 
all these are coming under what? Coming under what? Is it coming under introduction, body, or conclusion? Tell me. Ahmad? It is only introduction. It is only introduction, yeah. Ahmad. Because you are, you are talking so many things in your introduction, right? Mm -hmm. What's extra purposes, outcomes, recent developments? Because the question is not about what is extra. It's basically about impact, right? So you should understand, I'm looking at the, the next one, advantages and disadvantages of extra. The structure is good, but the problem is how you're going to wait your answer. If you write so many things up to recent developments and only very few points on advantages and disadvantages, you don't get much marks. Got my point? Is it clear? Right. So this this is the, this is the thing you should practice. Right? When you get a question, first analyze the question. Don't jump and write anything. Right? Because I can see sometimes they start writing something and in the middle, they don't know what they have written on the top and totally different thing in the middle and towards the end, a totally opposite story. Right. So then you don't get marks. Okay, any other questions? Any other questions? So, so there is a question that like, uh, because uh, I have seen that there are some uh, the institutions like uh, Kadir Gamar Institution for International Relations like that. There are a lot of uh, organizations doing this subject, working with mm -hmm. this subject. Yes. So, uh, uh, as uh, engineers, yeah. Uh, actually, I just like to know that what what are, what are they actually teaching in the uh, because are they about the about the like uh, like what. Uh, like this, uh, like you superpowers, politics, or somewhat, or something relevant to the Sri Lankan politics, so, or, and how we, how now, we should deal when, with when this. When we take international affairs, right? Yes, so there are different, different sections. First is like uh, polit politics, ne? international yes. politics, because political relationships, right? And bilateral agreements, bilateral trade, those are also international relations, right? Affairs. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. And also, there are so many negotiations, ne? right? Yes. Negotiations. Maybe uh, the, now, if you look at India and China, they always, you know, fight. Ne? What's the problem? Their borders are not clear. Ne? Yes. So these also are international affairs. And sometimes maybe. Tariff, tariff policies, right? Now I so, I show you uh, the the trade war between U.S. and China. U.S. imposed some tariffs, and then China retaliated. Ne? Then this continued for a certain period, right? And it may be something related to uh, certain laws that right? all are coming under international affairs. But maybe when, when we said your questions, we limit to your syllabus. I highlighted three areas, right? So that's the areas we are going to cover. But when we say world politics, anything can be there. Ne? Yeah. Okay. Did I answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Right. What are important issues in Sri Lanka in the relation is current regimes of India, which affect our vital bilateral relationships. 
now the thing is uh, with the current current uh, you know uh, situation uh, indian power and all political uh, situation uh, basically now they try to exploit opportunities in sri lanka ne? trade uh, opportunities in sri lanka so now they behave aggressively right so in that case when we fail to now the thing is previous government has promised certain things and the new government is trying to say no no we are not going to do that and at the same time india is worry about the chinese presence in sri lanka right because they are not now they don't have a good relationship and everyone is trying to control the south asian region because uh, very much your politically this is very much important area right? so because of that it's very difficult to balance india china and also the western countries so that's the problem when we try to uh, work with uh, european countries uh, then what happen we don't get any support from china right so if you can remember in 2015 when the uh, yapal government came into power without looking at any facts what they did they suddenly stop or halt port city development projects right somewhere in 2015 february right then what happened thereafter the government couldn't secure any investment from china it was very difficult to attract investment from china the reason was it was a very bad signal for the chinese government they realized the new government is an ally of western powers right and they didn't even talk about sri lanka at the uh, un assembly right but now it is opposite right so we should understand sri lankan situation with this kind of uh, the, the government in uh in the in the power ne? now whether it's uh a government supporting china or government supporting european countries okay any other questions right now now look at this question I hope you can see this. The question is: uh, Yes, this is the question. now if you get this kind of question i introduce you a concept right that is debt trap diplomacy the meaning is given It refers to strategy of chinese government to trap development to underdeveloped countries in africa and asia to borrow money to be used for much needed infrastructure project so what they're going to do they they do a lot of development projects however using borrowed money right and that has become a kind of trap so everyone talk this chinese debt trap they give money and then countries fail to repay it and then take 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 over the uh, asset critically evaluate this statement highlighting the pros and cons of debt finance development projects in sri lanka So you can see there are a lot of debt finance development projects, including Hamadra Port, right? Not only that, you are required to write recommendation to overcome disadvantages you have identified. So this is a question, right? So first thing, introduction, some kind of idea, introduction. Then advantages, disadvantages, right? recommendations right 
So if you have a structure and language, you get the other marks, right? So that's, that's the way you should structure your answer. When you get a question, first thing you have to do, you have to give, explain the concept, right? And that is a kind of not, that is not a comprehensive answer, right? Don't uh, misunderstand. But I show you a kind of, you know, structure that I usually use. Maybe sometime you can develop this kind of structure before you draft your answer, or write your answer, right? Introduce the concept, then critically address the, the questions, advantages and disadvantages, so pros and cons. Then try to think what are the advantages? Not only one point, several points. What are the disadvantages? Not only one point, several points. And then I have asked in that question to make recommendations for negative or the uh, the the uh, negative uh, things. Then you have to provide a recommendation for each each negative point you identify. Okay, then the conclusion, uh, recommendation and conclusion. Is it clear? Screen is out. Okay, yes, I close it. <laughs> hmm? Right. Any any other questions? Now I I think I discuss about the syllabus and the the common problems of the students, and then I uh, uh, discuss one question with you, right? And I show you one 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 question I develop and the kind of you know quickly show you the structure I have uh, marked the answers. Now you have a better understanding about this you know the paper, but. Uh, I usually look at the recent developments, then I pick recent developments because this is all about world politics, right? And United Nations related things. And also uh, the other aspects. That's all I have to share with you. If you don't have any specific questions, maybe yes, it's already 7.10. Uh, we can go up to 7.30 if you have questions. Otherwise we can finish the session. Any questions? Right. So it seems no, you don't have any particular questions. And thank you very much for joining with these sessions. Right. <clears throat> so usually you have two hour sessions, but practically, what I believe when it is online session, one hour is the maximum and go beyond one hour is not effective. Right. But still, I continue up to one hour and 40, 40 minutes. I uh, hope I could share a kind of views on this this question and the way you should correct the common limitations that have been identified by your your institute so yeah the last thing we show all the best for your exam uh so i'm like, sir yeah yes so if, we, uh, if we uh, write some uh, sample question sample answers and if we send you could be uh, mark them uh, as a favor. You mean before the exam, you write answers and send it to me, and I mark those answers? Yes, if you want one or two questions, then you get an oh, understanding of okay. approach. <laughs> no, no. no. Okay, so it's okay. Yeah, I understand your concern, but this is just a guidance, right? I think now okay. uh, you had to prepare, really prepare for the examination. And I might not be able to consult on that kind of personal basis. Although I have shared my email and mobile info, mobile number, uh, I think you will not call me and ask about the questions and the concepts. Uh, but for any other things, maybe other than the examination, if you, if you think you should better talk to me, in that case, you can talk or you can drop, drop an email to me, right? Okay. Right. 
So thank you very much and wish you all the best. Thank you.